Yay, I think I'm the first one to the party. As usual. Let's see who the next first one is. Okay, here they come. Come in, ladies. Say hi. Let us know you're here. Hey, Cindy, you're the first one. You're my dog. We're going to do another Americana project this evening. Show you how to use these gallon jugs. Hi, Jean. Hey, Christine. I'm going to go a couple more and then we're going to get started. This is not a this is not a really long project, so it won't take us long to to uh, get it. Nancy and Kathy, good to see you, girls. Glad to have you stop in. Let me see if we're coming up down here on my iPad. I don't think so. Don't have it on yet. Okay. Hey, Janice. Debbie. We're going to be working on a gallon jug tonight. If you're new to us this evening, girls, I am Judy Mullins from Tennessee, and uh, I have Vintage to Chic, which is a page you're on, and I also have a group, a group where we post what you've been doing, or like the ladies we've got as growing really good, and it's called Creating with Judy. So if you want to post your goodies and what you're making and stuff so we all can enjoy them, then come over and join that group, join Creating with Judy. I also have an Etsy shop where I sell my products. It's called Vintage to Chic, and then I have another one where I sell my designs, and it's called Maddie B Design Studio. So I think I've got all that down, okay? Tonight we're going to work on a gallon jug, and this is my jugs, okay? This is just a plain gallon jug, which you can get wine, all different stuff, apple cider, different things come in them. And a lot of people have trouble getting them in the areas where they live. Where they live. Uh, when I decide that I need jugs, I usually put the word out on uh, Marketplace, and I can usually find the last time I found a guy here in uh, Knoxville that uh, I bought over 100 jugs, just a little over about 102. So say so just say 100 jugs, I bought 100 from him at one time. And he runs a um, kitchen over there where they make barbecue sauce. So he buys hot sauce in them. So these were had hot sauce in them. And of course they had the labels and you got to clean them and all. And I'm lucky Daryl does all my cleaning and all my prep stuff for me. And he also drilled a hole. He drills a hole in the back of these. This takes a uh, diamond, what's called a diamond bit, or just go into Lowe's or wherever you're shopping, Lowe's, Home Depot, whatever, and tell them you need a glass bit. Now, we drill with a drill press. We have a drill press, a big machine in our shop, and that's what we drill with. Some people do them by hand. We've never tried that, so I can't tell you how that works. But... You have to uh, do it under water. You have to keep that sprayed down. He keeps a bucket, a little tub underneath the drill press, and he keeps a spray bottle there of water, and you have to keep that wet all the time you're drilling it to keep it from cracking your glass. Uh, Lisa, thank you for sharing it. I hope the rest of you will share and help. We've grown over, we're way now over 500 we've grown in the last 10 days. So it's growing really good, and I'm real proud of that. I don't get anything for doing this, so this is not my business. But if it grows big enough, then it, then Facebook will pay me some. So that's a good thing. So if you can, just share the videos and share things from my page, and that will help us to grow. And I appreciate all that you that have. Okay? Uh, I'm going to show you first. This is the lights. I buy these lights at the Dollar Tree. This is 20 mini lights, it says. And they're, the set of 20 is better than having 35. This is a smaller set. So I buy the set of 20, and they're clear. And I only find them at Christmas time. I've never tried to buy them during the year. 
So Christmas time is when I find them, and I just go ahead and buy them by the case. And I, I can't remember if they come 24 or 48 to a case, but I do a lot of them. But you can go into there to the Dollar Tree in the fall when they start putting their Christmas decorations on or look online. They may come up online before they do in the stores. And they're 20, and they come in multicolored or clear, but I, I like the clear. So I keep these on hand. I have these on hand all the time, okay? Now, the, the, like I said, he's drilled the bottle for me, and I spray painted it. I like my finish to be nice and smooth. So 98% of the time, I use spray paint. If you've watched me before, I use this Rust-Oleum, which is spray and primer all in one. And just go outside, and when you spray paint, girls, I've been spray painting um, charger plates today. And it's real windy and bad here. So a couple of them I messed up out on the porch with spray. And then they, you know, the wind blew. And they got uh, uh, little sparkles of dust and stuff in them. So then you have to sand them off and start again. But I take it outside and I mist them a little bit at a time until I get the whole bottle covered. And you want to wait at least 24 hours before you start working on them. Don't just spray paint one and bring it back in in the next 30 minutes to an hour when it feels dry, don't jump on it and work on it because you'll you'll pull that paint right off. Okay, we're going to do Americana today on this one since this is a, a season we're coming into. It's the Fourth of July. This is one of the prints in my um, in my stu it, that I've made, and this is the Americana. This is a truck with the flag and the flowers. The only thing is, I cut it out, so I cut the underneath. It had uh, like dirt where it's sitting. The truck's sitting in the dirt. But because it's larger, I didn't want that dirt on my bottle. I will just paint that on there. So I'm going to turn the camera down a little bit, and we're going to get started on it. If you have questions, ladies, and I don't get them answered, we'll come back when we get done with the project. I'll come back and try to answer as many as I can for you. And if we run out of time, and, you know, if it gets late and we don't have time, then I always go back and read all the comments after the video post. And I will answer every one for you and, you know, do your answers and help you what I can. I'm going to turn my camera down a little bit now so you can see what I'm doing. Okay, I think that's got it okay. Okay, this one, I, I printed it in 8 by 10 Those of you that have been buying the prints, I've been, I always send you an extra one. When you buy so many, I send you an extra one. And I usually um, uh, do a double one to show you because you can order the prints with two on a page instead of one. This is an 8 by 10 But if you want to put it on a smaller piece, those little round bottles, I'm going to do one of them. I'm working with a project uh, Thursday night that's going to be shared over to Craft Around the Clock. And I'm going to do one of the little round bottles with um, uh, something. I don't know yet whether I'm going to do Mother's Day or whatever on it, but I'm going to use the uh, mulberry paper. So I'm going to use mulberry paper on it. So watch. But if I wanted to put this on a small bottle, I would put it, in two cut you know have two prints on a page which would give me two five by sevens uh jackie my paint is matte it's either matte or flat is what you want this one's flat so you want to either the flat or the matte that's hard to say <clears throat> but i have done this one and cut it out now i want my lights to be in the back so i've got the hole in the back and i'm just going to lay it down on the table find my glasses here And let's see, I've got my brush and my Mod Podge over here. Now I'm going to show you something here. It's hard for me to, to for you to see that, but because I've got this right up here at the top, see this sticks up a little bit. So I'm going to take my scissors and cut into that a little bit because as the bottle goes over across the top like that, I want it to lay down. And uh, yes, Christine, I have the digital downloads. Have them both digital and printed. And I prefer to sell the digital rather than printing them out and trying to ship them out. Because that's a lot of more work on me. I just as soon sell you the digital. You need to learn. Everybody needs to learn how to print their own because it's such an eye-opener when you can do that. Okay, I'm going to go in here and right at the top of this design, because that bottle comes up and rounds over, it comes over like this, and I want that to lay down flat right there at the top. I'm going to take my scissors, and very easily, just a little small, I'm going to cut some little cuts across there. 
Anytime you're working on curves, if you've seen me work on curved things before, if you clip into that, you'll be able to get your piece to lay down a lot better. And you want to be sure and get your truck. Your truck is really what you want to get straight here. You want to get your truck in the right place. And then I'll go in after it's done and I'll paint the shading under that truck. So I think I've got it in about the spot I want. And I've got my saran wrap here. I just use a piece of saran wrap. Uh, Christine, my site for my prints is uh, Maddie B Design Studio on Etsy. Etsy .com. You can. I've always got it posted on my page there. Or you can order them from my page and have them sent to you. But they're all on Maddie B Designs. Okay, now I'm going to raise this side up. And I'm going to put my Mod Podge. I have my Mod Podge in a small container if you're new to me. And I put a little bit of water in it. I never work out of that big bottle of Mod Podge because you dirty it up. And then you're going to lose half of that bottle because it's stringy and it's got dirt and dust and stuff in it. Where you take your brush in and out of it. So I put it in a small container and I add a few drops of water to it to thin it down. It takes very little Mod Podge to make a, a piece work. So, you know, you don't need to do that. And then, because I buy mine in the gallon, then I just refill this thing all the time and use it that way. Okay? So I'm going to take up, hold my pattern on one side and down on the other. And I'm going to put just a little, not very much of the glue goes down there. It takes so little to glue something down. A lot of people get in trouble when they put too much glue on there. Especially using napkins. Rice paper is so much easier, girls. It's it's so forgiving. And all that uh, napkins is not. My nose, every time I get on here, my nose itches. Okay, now I'm going to lay that down. Take my finger and push that around there. Now I'm going to go up to the top, and right here now I'm going to push those down one at a time. There's the first one. Then I'm going to, okay, and I see that I need to clip that one just a little bit more. Because I don't want a wrinkle up there. So I'm going to clip into that. Take my finger and lay that down. Lay them down one at a time. So I try not to get, a, I got just a little tiny bit of a wrinkle up there. And I really don't even like that, but I've got it, so... Now, so I've got that up over the top. Okay. Take your fingers and work out your, work your glue. I always work from the center out. And I use a piece of saran wrap, just a crumpled up piece of saran wrap, and take it across that piece and glue it down. Uh, there's a link in my shop that shows you what rice paper I use, and you can order it from Amazon. Okay, now I'm lifting up the other side, and I'm going to go in here and glue the other side down. Put my glue in here. Uh, Jackie, Mod Podge does make your napkins mushy, and that's most of the time is because you're using too much. And it's okay to put your napkin on, do the underneath, and put your napkin on, and wait and let it dry a little while. Go ahead and work on the rest of your project or working on something else, and that, let that dry a little while before you put that top coat on the napkin, because you've already wet the napkin from the back side. So if you go back in immediately and top coat it and are not very careful, then you'll get it too wet. And when you rip a napkin, then it's very hard to repair it, you know, to fix it. So you're better off just doing it, you know, do it, let it dry, and then go back. And the same way I'm going to do this one, rather than get my hands, get my hands because I'm going to put some stuff on the other side of the jar bottle. So rather than get my hands in that, I'm not going to put that top coat on there for a few minutes. See how pretty that went down on there? It's got it, and it takes about halfway around. Okay, here we go. Now I'm going to put something on the back. I want to decorate it. I want to decorate it all the way around. So I went in today, and I made me a new design. And this one says, uh, Land of the Free Because of the Brave. And it's a flag with some roses on it. And I printed this one out this evening, and I printed two. I printed two on a sheet of this one because I wanted them five by sevens. 
As it turned out, I probably might could have used an 8 by 10 on the back of there, but I didn't. So I used, printed it out with two on the page, and I got two 5 by 7s. And this time, I wanted, I'm working white on white, the white of my background and the white of my bottle. So I'm working white on white. So I just took my fingers and I tore around that. You can use the water if you need to, but you don't have to. It's not necessary. So just hold your paper and take your other hand and rip as close as you can rip to that uh, print there and <clears throat> tear it out that way instead of cutting it out. Because it's got all lots of these little jagged edges and I don't want to cut into all that. And this white's going to fade away into your other white, okay? So that one I will post. I'll post those in my in my thing. So if you want that one too. And then I printed out a sheet that has nothing but uh, stars on it, red, white, and blue stars, and I cut out, I cut, took about half of the page, and I cut them out, and I'm going to put those around my bottle, just little stars, and they're all different sizes, okay, so I'm going to go now, and since I've not put anything on that, it's all right for me to, to lay it down, and uh, I got some napkins on my table that's fuzzy and now I got them on my project. Let me flip my papers over here where it's clean. Okay, now I'm going to lay this down here and just over here where the hole is at in the back for the lights, I'm going to put this right up here on the about middle ways. I'm going to put that up on there. Like I said, this is a fairly quick project. In the jugs, I do the same thing when I'm doing a, valent, a Halloween jug or Christmas, Halloween and Christmas, I sell tons of jugs. And fall, I do lots of different fall ones. And we'll do some more as it gets into the to the seasons. And I'll show you some that's a little more involved. And I love doing the Christmas ones. And then having the lights in them really makes them pretty. I sell a lot of them for the holidays. Okay. I did the one side. Hold my paper up. Put my glue down. And do the other side. Okay. I still haven't, you know, put my top coat on yet. As long as you don't forget that before you're finished is, is all that matters. You don't have to do it right away as you're working on it. And I don't like to work on something and have to dry it. I want it to dry on its own or to be working on it. Like I said, I work assembly style. If I was working on jugs for my shop to sell, I'd be working on two or three at the same time. So that the drying time would just be, you know, in there. I, by the time the first one, or the third one was done, the first one would be dry. That's how little amount of glue I used on there. Okay, I've got this one, and I've got this side. Now I'm going to go in with my stars. I cut out some, but I may not have cut out enough, so we're going to try with it. And there's no rhyme or reason as to where I put them. Okay, I'm going to start right around here at the top, and I'm just going to put me down a little bit of glue right here and place me a star right there. Now those are going to slide around on you, so I'm going to go ahead and put a little top coat on them. I just have to be careful with them, because putting something that small like that, they're going to slide around on you, if, you know, so try to stay, keep your hands out of them. And just uh, go ahead and put your top coat on them. If you buy one of these prints, I'll send you the stars along with it. You know, if you got a print, then I'll see that you have the stars too. Okay. I'm going to go right on around my bottle. My jug. I'm going to put this one. Go down here around the middle. And you get your lights in, and I don't put the lights in them usually till after I get them varnished. But the good thing is with having these jugs, you use a set of lights, and a lot of people ask, well, what do I do if the lights go out? Well, if the lights go out, just take you a pair of wire cutters and cut the end off of that light and pull it out the top and then put you a new set right in there. That's all you have to do to replace your lights.
If you saw the bottle I did last week in the Jack Daniels, when I finished it, I put a big red bow on it. Okay, those bows are made out of fabric. I buy, I go to Hobby Lobby, and I buy fabric that's printed on both sides. You can't have anything, if you're making your bows out of fabric, you have to be sure that the fabric's printed on both sides. So I buy, if I'm using red, I buy a red check, and it is printed on both sides of the fabric, so I can make a bow out of it. I do that at Halloween. I have a Halloween ribbon. I have a black and white check, and they all are printed on both sides. Went all the way around there, and I've just scattered the stars all the way around. See, I think I'll put another one right down. I've got one more big one here. Let's see where I'm going to put it. I think I'll put it right down here, closer to the bottom. I have two big ones on that side. Went all the way around. Now, I'm going to put some checks on the bottom of this, and I'm still going to leave that Mod Podge on there until I get those checks on so I can show you how to do them. And I just want the, the red. I'm using red, and I use uh, Liquitex red paint, which is a really, really good red. And I've bought it in the jar, and I've bought it. This is new. I'm trying this tube. And it's not, the tube is not really as strong as what I get in the jar, but it's worked out okay. It's not nearly as expensive. And I'm using a brush. This is a size 12. You want a good flat brush. Make sure I got a good one here. Something to work with. Let's see, I think I'll use this. Let me go over here and look. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3. I think I have any 12s open. Probably up in my brushes. Okay, this 10 one's got a good flat edge better than the 12, so I'm going to use it. Try this one, see what this one is. Okay, that's a 10 too. Okay, I'm going to put just a little bit of paint. Uh, your plug, okay, Christine, your plug doesn't go in. I'll, I'll put the lights in when I'm finished here, and I'll show you your plug doesn't go through the hole. Just your lights go in, and your plug and your wire, or your cord will hang out. And then, like I said, if you're going to pull them out the top and replace your lights, you just clip that plug off with some wire cutters. And to drill the hole, Julie, like I said when we started, we use a drill press, and we use a diamond, what's called a diamond glass bit. You need, and if you're going to drill them by hand, you you know, they still have to be. Some people use a hand drill. I'm not sure, you know, we've not ever done that because we've had a wood shop for 25 years, 35 years. So we have a machine called a drill press, which you just pull down on. But you do have to keep your bottle wet while you're working on it. And never drill something that's a heirloom or something that's you know you can't lose that you're, invested in to not lose it, don't try to drill it because you never know when they're going to crack on you. We have bottles crack and things to crack and people, we make lamps out of, you know, we used to make lamps out of teacups and stuff. We did that for years and people would say, well, I've got a teacup that belonged to my grandma. Would you make me a lamp out of it? But no, I would never do that because I may crack that cup in trying to drill it. So make sure it's something that you don't care when you're learning or just, you know, with glass. <laughs> Can you borrow my Daryl? You would love him. He's been great. Now, girls, oh, he's sick. He's he's has lung disease, and he's down to where he doesn't can't do much work in the shop, and that's sad for him. And you know, it's hard for him. But he's been my right hand man all the time. All the forty years I've worked, he's been right there by my side. He retired from his job. When he worked his job, he'd come home of the evening or. If he worked the night shift, he come and went to the wood shop of the day before he went to work, and he's cut all my wood and done all my stuff all the time, years that I've worked. Okay, I've got a size 10 brush here, and I'm going to go around here with checks, and I'm going to eyeball them. I'm not going to use a, use a thing, nothing to cut them with. These are more like hash. I'm just loading hash marks. I'm just loading my brush flat. Over here on my palette, I have my brush, and I'm just going to lay it down there and load it flat. 
And then I'm going to try not to get my hands in those stars. And I'm going to go down here and start right here at the bottom. And I'm going to do a check there. Just a little long check. And I'm going to do them all the way around. If you saw those plates that I did, the Christmas plate I showed the other day, everybody want to know how I got all those checks on there and didn't pattern them? Well, this is the same way I do them. I do them freehand. But it takes a little bit of experience and a little, you know, eyeballing it to get them. But it's no, you know, they, they don't have to be, when you're doing something like this, they don't have the, have to have the exact distance around them. And nobody's going to see both sides at the same time. They're not going to pick up that bottle and be able to look at them all the way around. So if they don't match on one side to the other side, it's no big deal. It's just a pop of color on the bottom there that, you know, that helps you with your project. Working right on around. He not only works in the woodshop, girls, he cleans all my bottles. <laughs> he washes all my glass and, and and cleans the labels off. I wouldn't even know how to take a label off. Today he was putting the salty fingers on the back of some pieces for me. Okay. My son is an excellent woodworker, too. You should see a table. I'll post it when he gets done. He made a table for a customer this week, a coffee table, and the top of it slides to open. You just touch the top, and it slides across, and you've got storage in, in that underneath that table, and it's gorgeous. I'll take a picture of it. He just brought it out of the shop today. I'll take a picture of it and show you. Okay? See, I went all the way around with that. And I think I've got enough room because I'm going to shade underneath this. Uh, I always shade under whatever looks like it's on the ground because right now that truck's just hanging there and he might fall off. So I want the shades, but I still think I have enough room here to put another row of those above the first row. So I'm going to go in every other one and put me another row there. Right in between the spaces, I'm putting another check. My little finger is my guide. It holds that brush in place. When I varnish these in the final coat of varnish, I put glitter on them. But I put the glitter in the varnish. I don't, uh, I love the glitter on there, but you can't just, you know, you got to have something that holds it down. So I take my last coat of varnish and I put the glitter in the varnish and I brush it on. So the glitter stays on because the, the uh, varnish glues it onto your piece. Okay, see now I've went all the way around that bottom with that. Okay. Now, I'm going to put a, um, I'm going to, this one, I, on these jugs, if you get the lid, save the lid, because I don't like to, I, I'd rather have that closed off, so I save the lids, and these lids happen to be red that came on these. So when it's done, I put that red lid on there. But if I didn't have the lid, I would paint that red around the top, but I do, so now I'm just going to paint that edge. I want to get some color, a little, a little touch color up there. There's my brush. So I'm gonna go ahead and just paint this little section up here that uh, overhangs there. Little ledge around that top, I'm gonna to paint it red. It just carries a little more color up to your top. Turn my bottle here. I still don't want to get my hands in the print. I mean, in the things that's drying. Okay. 
Okay, I'm gonna have to go down to a smaller brush to get in there. Okay. You turn your project however it's comfortable for you. If it takes standing on your head to get it done, then that's what you do. I'm trying to get that without getting the paint down on the rest of my bottle, so I have to be real careful with that edge. But I'm going all the way around with that, with that red. This red is different than the red on my lid, so I may just go back to and paint my lid. But since that lid's plastic, I'm going to have to uh, put something on it to seal it which would be maybe a coat of Mod Podge on that lid or something before I put the red on, because if I don't, it'll probably peel off. So if I go in first and coat my lid with Mod Podge and let it dry, and then put my red paint on there, it'll stay on there. And that'll just make the two reds, that'll make the two reds blend together and match. Okay. Okay. Now, I'm going all the way around that bottom. Let's go around here and finish the top. Uh, where'd I get, get my jugs from? These jugs I bought from a man here in town that has a uh, kitchen where they make barbecue sauce and he sells it so his jugs were um these had hot sauce in them and i bought a bunch of them at one time okay now i've got that on there clean my brush see when i put that lid on there that lid's totally different well it's not so different i may leave it i may not so i'll have to decide but if not i'll paint that red now i want to go back down here to my chicks and i want to put a little shading above those checks. Like I said, every little bit that you do, every little thing that you add to it right down to the spackling, that all makes a difference and makes your project look more like you've hand, you know, you've hand painted all that and done it. So I'm going to go in here first and I'm going to take a light, let's see, I usually use like a, uh, just a light brown color. This is called uh, honey brown. I'm going to take a little bit of this. Put it out on my palette, and I'm going to put a little bit of uh, my painting medium down, which allows me to put my stuff, my paint on there without using water, and I only want it on one side of that brush. So when I load that brush back over here to my palette, I'm going to dip it in the uh, painting medium, load it. It's clear. It's just a clear stuff. There's no color to it. What it does is give that paint a little bit of body and allows you to move it instead of just having a harsh stripe. So after I go in and put the meeting on, I take one corner, one corner of the brush, and dip it over in that brown, like so. Then I'm going to come down here on my palette and blend it a little bit back and forth. So when that blends, it blends from color to nothing. One side's color and the other side's is gone to nothing. So I'm going to go down here now and right along the top edge of these, the top of the checks, I'm going to drag that. I'm using the full flat of the brush, but I've only got paint on one side. And again, my little finger is being my guide. When my paint gets low, I go back in and load it again, blend it on your palette, and then come right back in and continue right on around. This is just one more little thing that's added to make the bottle a little more finished. Okay. Every little thing you do, if you just stick a napkin on something and don't decorate it in any way or a picture on there, if I just stuck that truck on there and didn't decorate with it, it, it wouldn't look nearly as good. You know, you want to do as much as you can to uh, decorate it. Sometimes you decorate it with, you know, add some bling to it or some, you know, you might uh, if you had a some kind of rope or something that had a something that represented uh, 
U.S., you might put tie that in with your ribbon at the top. See, now I went all the way around that red checks. See, that little bit of, of uh, shadow around there where you can see that. Now I'm going to go back in here and I'm going to put some dirt and some grass underneath that truck. Okay, and I'm going to do that with the same brush and my painting medium. Then I'm going to put out a little bit of green. This is called avocado. This is Americana's avocado is usually what I use. I'm going to put a little bit of that doesn't take much so I just need a little squirt and I'm going to use some darker brown this one is uh, brown iron oxide and this is a delta color ceram coat but any kind of brown anything you know you're you're doing like dirt so it doesn't matter what you you know just got you a brown and a green I'm just going to kind of mix the two together now I'm going to this truck the way this truck is set on here you've got to put your shading from left to right not up and down because it won't look like ground. If you just go in there and put some marks down, it won't look like ground. You want to do it just like you see a picture. But once you start painting and doing things like this, then you notice stuff in other places. You'll notice a picture, and it may have a bowl sitting on a table. If you look, that bowl has a shading and a highlight and stuff under it because it casts a shadow on whatever it's sitting on. So that's kind of what you're trying to do. you got to give your project a little bit of uh, stuff down there to sit down on. Okay? And, uh, I can't find Maddie B on Etsy. <laughs> okay, it's Maddie, M-A-D-I, not M-A-D-D-I-E. It's M-A-D-I-B, Design, D-E-S-I-G-N, Studio, S-T-U-D-I-O dot Etsy dot com. I'll post it in the comments. So when you, you know, when you're looking for it. But it's all over my page online on my Vintage to Chic page. But I'll post it for you. Okay, I'm picking up a little bit of the medium on my brush. And I'm going in here and on the other corner, I'm going to pick up a little bit of that green. Come down here and blend it on my palette a little bit. Picking up a little more medium and green. Then I'm going to dab into that to brown just a little and kind of mix the two. Mixing the brown and green, but it's still just on one side of my brush. The other side is just medium. Okay, just play with it a little, little bit. Now I'm going to go in here and set it down, and I'm just going to go across like this. And I'm just kind of hitting it very lightly and pull it. Right up close to the bottom of the truck. If you really wanted to work on it, you could go in there with a liner brush and put some grass under that truck or, you know, work on it big time if you really wanted to get at it. But pull your paint across so that it looks like ground. Don't take it up and down. Go down to your tire, round your tire on your truck, and then ride on across the top of the bottle. And you try to get the same as you got on one side. You try to go up to that same spot on the other side. Kind of equal distance. So I've got this over here. I'm going to come over here and put a little bit right there. See now? My truck's kind of sitting on the ground. See how he looks? He's just got a little bit of ground underneath him. Okay, we're just about done, girls. Okay, now I still haven't put the top Mod Podge coat over top of that. So, I'm going to go in now and use my, let me get my brush up here, my, out of the water. Clean it. This is the one I use for Mod Podge. So, I'm going to set my palette back over here out of the way. Get my glue out. And again, I'm only going to use a little bit. What was the full name where we can post our projects? That is called Creating with Judy. You go in, look it up on Facebook, Creating with Judy, and request to join. 
and you join Creating with Judy, and you'll see we've got, oh, I don't know how many, maybe 1,500, 2,000 people in there. I've had it open for a few years, and we all share, we share what we've made, and we talk and discuss things, because you can't share on a business page. If you have something that's really on Creating with Judy, and you've posted something, and I want everybody to see it, if you've done such a good job, which I do with that every, every now and then, I choose somebody, and then I share you over to my page. If I put you over on Vintage to Sheep page, you'll be there. But you can't just go in and post. That's the way uh, Etsy's, I mean, Facebook's got it set up. Now I'm just going to go back in here, pick up a little bit of glue, make sure all of my corners are glued down where those pieces that I've put on there. Make sure you sneak in there to the edges and all of that's glued down good. I've got some fuzz. I've got cats in the house, so... I have a hard time with the fuzz. My girls have cats. Okay, now. I'm not putting very much steel. I just want enough to seal the outside of that print is all I want on there. It will not make my piece real wet again. Because I'm using very little. And I've already put it on the stars, so I don't have to do those again. Now I'm going to go around here and do this big piece. Again, check your edges. Make sure all your edges are glued down as you're putting it on there. If you're printing your own designs and you're printing with an inkjet printer, I have two inkjet printers that print really, really well. And I don't have any problem with them. But just to be on the safe side... I print, and then I spray them with just, I keep a cheap hairspray. And the $2 kind, or whatever you can find, a dollar store, or whatever. And when I print something, I spray it a little bit. And I really get a better print from those two uh, inkjet printers than I do my laser printer. And uh, the cartridges are so expensive for the laser printer. Of course, you're using a lot of ink, and I that's why I just soon sell you the uh, digital designs and you learn to print your own, you can buy you a printer for less than $150. You know, an inkjet printer. And then you're unlimited. It, you, it just opens up a whole new thing for you people. Listen to me. You, you'll love it when you learn to print your own. There were so many things. I, like I said, I've told you before, I've been painting for about 40 years. But I only, and I decoupaged years and years ago when I had my shop, but it was a whole different thing then. It wasn't nothing like it is today, and it was hard to do. So I only done enough. When you have the shop, you had to learn to do stuff to teach people how to do it so you could sell the supplies. So I learned just enough to be able to show people how to do it and be able to sell the product. But now it's just a whole different ball game, the decoupage is. And when I started it, I've been doing decoupage less than five years that I added it to my painting. And I, there were so many things I wanted to do that I couldn't find a napkin for. So I thought, well, I'm I'm going to have to. And the, the hairspray does keep your paint from smearing. It does. But let it dry a little while. Put it on your piece and then let it dry for a couple hours or so before you go in there. Now, one lady told me she prints her. She buys prints from me buys the things and prints her own. And she said she lays hers in the freezer. She prints her paper, and then she lays them in the freezer for a while and then takes them out, and she's had no problem whatsoever with, with them running, with them, you know, the paint smearing. And uh, uh, Gloria, I paint on copy on rice paper. And you do need rice paper. It's very thin. This, this paper, see how transparent this paper is? That's the back side. And this is the front. And there's a link in my shop that shows you the rice paper that I use. So if you go in, if you don't find it, just holler at me and I'll, I'll send it to you. But I buy it on Amazon. comes a hundred sheets to a, to a package. And then they're not exactly, one I bought was way bigger than my sheets. So you can cut them to fit your printer paper. And sometimes your printer, you may have to attach them to another sheet. Some printers make you do that. And if you do that, you just take a, uh, let me get one of these little things over here and show you. 
this right here is what I use. If I have to attach it, and my laser printer, sometimes I have to attach that rice paper to a regular sheet of paper to get it to go through my laser printer. So what you do is you take a regular, this is not a regular sheet of paper, but I'm going to show you how to do it. You take a, a sheet of rice paper, and you lay it down, and this has a slick side and a uh, rough side, and you want to paint to print on the rough side. So fix it to your paper, lay your papers together, and know which side your printer will print on. You'll have to do a sample through your printer and see what it prints on. And then these little things are scrapbook, are done for scrapbook. This is called a remo removable tape. Get the one that's removable and not permanent. And then I only attach it at the top. I pick that paper up and I take a couple little strips across that. It's just like a little glue dot. And then I press that down. And at the top, don't ever, don't attach the bottom to a paper because you want the air to come through. Then when I put that through my printer, it'll print on that because it's got the thickness now of a thicker sheet of paper. Some of them, you have to do that. Some you don't. You know, sometimes mine goes through fine. I got one that I don't have a bit of problem with. I got another one that sometimes it jams up on me. If your printer jams up, it's not hard to get it loose to go in and, and clean out a piece of paper. That's no big deal to have to do that. But this is what you want. You can buy these at uh, Hobby Lobby or any craft store. And they are, they're uh, open up and you can buy the inserts, new inserts for them to put them in there. Okay. Uh, okay, let's see. What kind of paper for inkjet printer? Same thing, rice paper. Use your rice paper, okay? Use your rice paper no matter what because that's the thin, that's the paper you want for decoupage is rice paper. It's just so much, you know, it's flexible and it's transparent. So this is what you want to print on to make your prints, okay? Now I'm just about done with this. Just, I'm going to spackle it. See how pretty it is? It goes all the way around. And I'm going to spackle it. So I've got it all done. And it's ready for me to spackle. And if you've not seen me, I do that with a toothbrush. I'm going to use an old toothbrush. Oh, I'm going to show you first about the lights. So I'm going to do that before I spackle it. Because I'll have to let it, uh, let it dry. Thank you, girls, for the hearts. I appreciate that. Okay. Take my lights out of the box. I just throw the box away. And... See, they just come wrapped together. I'm not going to put them in completely because I want to varnish it first, but I'm going to show you how to do it. Just stretch your lights out to the end. Get them to the end. Now, when you do your hole, I should have asked Daryl what size hole that is, but I think it's about a half inch at least. I don't have, let's see here. My ruler will tell me what size hole that is. Okay. Yes, it is. That hole is half inch. So if you're buying a bit, you need a half inch drill bit uh, to drill that hole in there. And then I just take this first light, stick it in there. Take the second one, turn it down to where the light and the wire goes through at the same time. And just continue right on through there until you get it all the way down to the last light. Then you've got a set of 20 lights down in there. And I'll do that after it's varnished. I'll put the lights in it. Always check your lights. I always plug them in and check them to make sure my lights are good before I start putting them in there. Okay, now I'm going to use a palette knife. And this is my palette knife. And I'm going to use a dark shade of red. I usually use a, uh, most of the time I use a cranberry wine, especially if I'm working with the red stuff. I use a cranberry wine. I'm going to put my paint out over here on my palette. And this time, my paint, I want my paint to be about like ink. So I'm going to take my palette knife, pick up a little water up here in my water bowl, and put it down here in my paint, and mix it in so that my paint is, you know, thinned down a little bit. It's not quite as thin as ink, but it's thin enough to come off that brush real easy. And then practice. Get you a piece of paper or a paper plate or something, and... and uh, practice before you go on your project with it. Now, when I load this toothbrush, I'm only going to load the tip end up here. Okay, I'm going to load that tip in. And I'm not going to go down and jump in that big clop of paint. I'm going to sneak right over here in the side and load that brush. So I've only got paint up here on the end. Then I'm going to set my project here and I'm going to pull 
that brush pull toward me from the starting at the end of my piece and I'm going to pull it toward me. And I'm not going to put it down there on the print. I don't want to cover it with the, with the stuff. So I'm just going to work my way around. This just adds another dimension to your project. Plus, as I always say, it hides a multitude of sins. If you want to hide your edges or, you know, something, then go a little heavier around those spots and you will, it'll just work right into your project and nobody won't even notice that there was edges there. It's kind of like snow. I would do the same thing if I was wanting to put snow on a Christmas piece. I'd be doing it the same way, but with white paint. I sent out some more Happy Meal this week. I think hers went out yesterday, so. We'll do it again. If you're good enough to come along and watch me, then I'm going to have a thing when we're doing it here in the uh, thing. I'll have something to send you some Happy Meal. Okay, now I'm done with that. Wipe my knife off. And he's finished. See how pretty that is? These are, this is a great gift. If you're going to give somebody, you know, if you're, if you buy Christmas for a family and you give them a family gift to say you have a brother and you buy one gift for the whole family, if you give them a Christmas present or a holiday design, they won't ever get rid of it. And every year when they pull that out, they'll say, well, uh, Susie or Jane or Judy, whoever it was, gave me that in you know, 2021, and they'll always remember that. People keep things that are holiday designs. Other things that are out in their home all the time, they eventually usually get rid of them. But they don't if you give them holiday things, especially Christmas Christmas pieces. I've got Christmas pieces I've had for years and years and years. Okay, I think we're done with that. When I get it varnished, I'll put a big red bow up here and have the lights in it, and then I'll take a picture of it and show it to you. Now, let me see if I can answer some few questions for you, if there's any questions in there that I need to answer. Okay. Paint makes it look so easy. It's just a little bit of practice. <laughs> and you need that print. Okay, Maxine, yours went out. I think I sent you an order. Of course, you got some that are digital, and you got some printed both, so you should you can get the digital and be able to print your own. Okay, let's see. So anybody else that's got, like I said, if I missed your questions, I'll go back in, you look back later, and I'll go back in and do, read all the things, and I'll uh, answer all your questions for you, okay? So I'm going to scroll up and scroll down and see if we got a winner. You have to be inside the United States, but uh, we'll see who wins tonight, and I'll send you some Happy Meal. So let's go up and down a couple of times. The only way you can win is if you're here during the live, okay? So now I'm going to go up, close my eyes, and the first person I see is Louise Hall, oh, I better put my glasses on, Lawson, L-A-Y-S-O-N, Louise Lawson, or Lason, send me your email, I mean send me your mailing address, and I'll send you some happy mail. Maybe some napkins, maybe a piece to work on, maybe a finished piece. But you'll get some happy mail in the mail sometime next week. So be sure, yeah, Louise, be sure you send me a message with your mailing address in it, okay? Okay, girls, I'm going to get out of here. I haven't felt too good today. I'm going to go eat a sandwich or some soup or something and rest a while. I can't shake this cough, and it's just been, you know, driving me nuts. I think I'm going to have to go to the doctor. But uh, I hope you have a good night and come back in on Thursday night. Thursday night, I'll be working with Craft Around the Clock. I'll post the time on uh, Vintage to Sheet tomorrow of what time that one is Thursday night. And we're going to do some uh, uh, mulberry paper on one of the bottles from Hobby Lobby. So be sure you come back in and, and join us, okay? Hope you have a good night. Good night, ladies.